welcome to The Farming Week, the podcast from Agriland that keeps you up to date with all the latest in Irish agriculture. I'm Louise Hickey and I'm joined today by journalists Ashling O'Brien and Breffney O'Brien. With Christmas just around the corner, it can be a financially difficult time for many. So it's a bit of good news to see that the department have issued many payments and schemes this week. Before we get into those, it's worth noting that the deadline for tranche two of TAMS three has been extended until January 19th, 2024. Advisors and farmers are also reminded that tranche three of TAMS three will close for applications on Friday, April 12th, 2024. Now, Ashton, could you just talk us through some of the announcements for payments made this week? Yes, Louise. Well, you look resplendent, firstly. Um, I know it's a podcast, so if people can't see us on social media, we're all bedecked in our finery for for Christmas week. And look, I know that all of the focus (laughs) is on Santa Claus and his elves who are very busy at the moment. But so is Minister for Agriculture, Charlie McConnellogue, and the Department of Agriculture, or perhaps Charlie Claus and the Daffam Elves, as we might call them this week, because there has been a slew of payment announcements uh, from various farm schemes. So let's kick off with acres. So a total of 76.5 million euro is to be paid out to more than 17,000 farmers who are taking part in the agri-environmental scheme. That is the start of the advance payments for tranche one and the average payment we're being told is almost four and a half thousand euro for individual farmers. Now, this is the first pay run of the scheme and it includes all general participants that have cleared payment validations. Now, the Department of Agriculture, as we've previously spoken about at length here on the podcast, has confirmed that those farmers who were in the acres cooperation stream, their advance payments will be delayed and they won't begin to issue until next February. So we also learned this week, staying with acres for a second, that there was just under 9,200 applications received by the department for tranche two of the scheme. Now, the majority of those applications have been submitted under the general stream with 30% applying for cooperation and tranche two can only accommodate 4,000 farmers. So it looks like there'll be a lot of farmers who could be disappointed there, Louise, unless uh, the minister finds more money to accommodate those additional farmers uh, seeking those places in acres. But staying with the payments and we'll move on to the 2023 fodder support scheme because balancing payments have started uh, this week as well. Uh, The minister said that in the region of 18 and a half million euro will arrive shortly in the bank accounts of more than 55,000 farmers across the country. Of course, this scheme continued on from the 2022 fodder support scheme and it all aimed to incentivize farmers, in particular dry stock farmers, to grow more fodder, silage uh, or hay as well to ensure that the country didn't have any animal welfare issues over the winter period. Now, there was also payments made to those who took part in the National Liming Programme. Payments of more than 6.6 million euros started to issue this week to 12,500 farmers who took part in that scheme. The minister said that all fully cleared claims by farmers, they've received their full payment and that remaining claims have received an 85% advance. Uh, more than 14,500 farmers actually submitted claims for payment under the 2023 Liming programme. Now, the final balancing payment will issue in 2024 when checks are completed following the spreading deadline, which of course was extended to March 31st. And Ashling, that's not all. When it comes to payments, there were some sector specific announcements too. Yes, Louise, let's start with the beef side of the house, because this week the payment of over 46 million euro to some 15,364 farmers in SKEP or the Suckler Carbon Efficiency Programme began. We learned that over 20,000 farmers actually applied for SKEP, but some applications were withdrawn and others failed one or more of the eligibility criteria that goes with the scheme. Now, of course, SKEP provides support to beef farmers to improve the environmental sustainability of the national beef herd. And it's come in for sharp focus, as we spoke about last week on the podcast, when it comes to the changes to the beef breeding indices uh, that ICBF have introduced as well. 
But moving on, uh, there's also payments this week for the National Beef Welfare Scheme. In total, over 14.2 million euro has commenced issuing to over 15,800 participating farmers. That scheme aims to further increase the economic efficiency and enhance animal health and husbandry on suckler farms. Now, switching to tillage and the department also confirmed that payments under the tillage incentive scheme have commenced. A total of 2,626 farmers are going to benefit from this support measure, which aims to incentivize the increase in the eligible tillage crop area this year to reduce the dependency on imported feed material. Farmers will be paid €200 for each eligible hectare under the maintenance option and will be paid €400 for each eligible eligible hectare under the newly converted land option. Now, not all applications are currently cleared for payment by the department and regular pay runs are going to continue over the coming weeks as cases are cleared. And finally, the straw incorporation measure, there's also payments issuing for that, uh, totaling 12.3 million euro. Of course, that scheme, which was introduced under the new CAP strategic plan, pays tillage farmers for chopping straw and incorporating it into the soil. It's been a really, really popular scheme. The payment rates under the measure are 250 euro a hectare for barley, wheat, oats and rye and 150 euro a hectare for oilseed rape. Now, the payments are subject to a minimum application of five hectares and a maximum application of 40 hectares. And look, overall, uh, Louise, before we leave schemes, it is important to note that it could take a couple of days for these payments to land into bank accounts. But if you do have any queries about it and you feel that the, the payment should have landed into your account and it didn't, make sure to contact the Department of Agriculture as soon as possible. They have a direct payments helpline and you can also email them as well uh, because look, every little counts at this time of the year more than any other time. Absolutely. Well, there's definitely quite a few there that have been announced in recent days. And on the topic of finance, Agriland has been following up on VAT returns to unregistered farmers. We have an in-depth explainer over on agriland.ie as to what is going on. And we also give an insight on the podcast last week. But I suppose the most up-to-date news there is that revenue met with the ICMSA yesterday, which we will be covering on agriland.ie. Another big story we have been following up on for the last couple of weeks is the ongoing dispute between knackeries and renders. Ashling, what is the latest there? So the Department of Agriculture has confirmed that a full fallen animal collection service has now thankfully resumed across the country, Louise. It followed discussions between officials from DAFM and the representative body for Irish Category 1 renderers, that's ICORA. Now, the outcome of those talks was that all three Category 1 rendering plants were reopened for deliveries from Friday, December 15th. And as a result, the department has said that the burial of fallen and animals is not being considered as a disposal option at this time and the advice for farmers who have fallen animals is to contact their local animal collector as is normal. Now, as we previously spoke about here in the podcast, we understand that the rendering plants across the Republic of Ireland stopped accepting material from knackeries for rendering on December 4th. And the dispute focuses really on an increase in the fees charged by renderers to knackeries. And the situation led to Minister Charlie McConlogue stating that fallen animals could be transported to Northern Ireland or that farmers could also get a certificate to bury the animals on their farm. But now that this has been resolved, um, that is not an option anymore. And farmers are being uh, told to go back to the, the status quo. So during the meeting with ICORA, the agriculture minister previously indicated that the department offered a generous increase to the subsidy paid for the benefit of farmers towards the rendering cost of fallen animals. Now, however, it's important to note, Louise, that the department in their statement to us this week didn't explain the terms of the agreement reached with the renderers in their discussions, uh, which has resulted in the reopening of the rendering plants. And we've spoken to a couple of uh, players in the industry, including knackery owner John Hastings, who told us that you know, knackeries uh, are back operating as normal, but there has been no resolution made whatsoever by the department on the overall issue here. He said that his understanding of the meeting between renderers and the department was that it was agreed that there would be a gesture of goodwill and that renderers would return to using previous prices in the lead up to Christmas. 
And he said that was to get things cleared up uh, ahead of the festive season. And he said that nobody was out of pocket. We also caught up with Hugh Farrell, the Irish Cattle and Sheep Farmers Association Animal Health and Welfare Chair, who welcomed the reopening of the rendering plants. But he said that the outcome of the discussions was only a temporary fix. Now, he said that his understanding was that there was some sort of a deal between the department and renderers to make up the difference temporarily, but they haven't come to an agreed price on it. So he said that has to be dealt with very, very quickly in the new year ahead of the calving season starting uh, at the end of January. Uh, You know, that's a very, very busy time and uh, this can often increase the, the level of fallen animals. So, you know, Hugh Farrell also said that the overall issue of uh, rendering cost levels has to be investigated by the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, the CCPC as well. Now, TJ Maher, who's the chair of the IFA Animal Health Committee, said that farmers would be relieved around the country. He said many of them had been left extremely frustrated because they had dead animals on their yards for up to as much as 13 days. In some cases, Louise, very, very serious situation. And he called for a full review of the the process because he said it's the IFA's view that for over a year, the whole animal collection procedure needs a complete overhaul. And he said they had received continuous reports of overcharging of farmers above the legal maximum. And he said the department have not got a proper review process in place for these charges. And that is something that needs to be looked at. Look, everybody welcomes the fact that the rendering plants have reopened. We never wanted to see a situation of of dead animals building up on farms or in knackeries around the country, Louise. But there is definitely a big issue to be dealt with early in the new year by the department and the minister as well. Thanks, Ashling. Now, I'm sure that all parties will be looking forward to an agreement early next year. And we also heard this week that the IFA made an agreement with Transport Infrastructure Ireland on a new national roads agreement, which covers compulsory purchase orders. Ashling, what is the agreement for? Yeah, well, CPOing uh, of land can often be very contentious. And uh, IFA President Tim Cullinan said this week that having land subject CPO for state infrastructure is very disruptive, extremely stressful and unsettling for farm families. And lots of farmers listening to us around the country may have had lands that have been CPO'd for roads. And this is exactly what this agreement relates to. So IFA and TII have reached a deal on the National Roads Agreement is what it is called, and it covers CPOs for road infrastructure. So it's going to apply to land which was CPO'd for national road developments up to December 31st, 2027, and the agreement will be backdated to include lands which have been acquired in this way from January 1st, 2022. So the agreement covers the compensation claim by landowners impacted by the CPO process and it provides an additional fixed payment of €6,500 an acre in recognition of the cooperation and early access provided by the landowner. The new agreement builds on a previous agreement which was hammered out back in 2016 and it sets out additional arrangements and procedures aimed at ensuring that landowners and the acquiring authorities are clear on the processes involved here. And the IFA Environment Chairperson Paul O'Brien said there were a number of key provisions in the agreement which are critically important for landowners. Louise, we list them all on Agriland if you are uh, or have been subject to CPO for a national road project. Definitely check that out. And it includes assessing the open market value of the land being acquired. This is done by reference and comparison to the size, location and quality of the land parcels that are part of the order. And uh, look, there is going to be a code of practice that is going to be updated and it will continue to provide guidance aimed at ensuring good liaison and communication with farmers affected by CPO for national road schemes. And that really is something that is crucial in this, Louise, that farmers are very much aware of their rights and what they're entitled to. And uh, that equally the the acquiring authority, which is often maybe a local council or a local authority, that uh, they're aware of their obligations as well under this code of practice. So it makes things a lot clearer for, for farmers who are impacted by that. And just moving on from that now, I'm joined by Agriland Technical Beef Specialist Brefni O'Brien. Brefni, a new market has been secured for Irish dairy heifers. The contract was secured by Wicklow Calf Company and Southeast Dairy Stock. Can you tell us a bit about it? 
Yeah, that's right, Louise. So there was a new market secured for Irish dairy heifers and a contract was signed to supply 1,000 of these to customers located in Lebanon. So the contract was signed by Wicklow Calf Company and Southeast Dairy Stock. Um, the duo uh, were speaking to Agriland and a spokesperson from Wicklow Calf Company confirmed that in the last few weeks, we have sent out a number of truckloads of maiden heifers and in-calf heifers to Lebanon. <clears throat> These calves went out through ports in Europe and the heifers travelled by boat from Spain and Croatia. Contract was signed for a thousand additional heifers and selections have started from a uh, Tuesday, December 19th. So there's customers for these calves are in Ireland this week. Uh, they've been in uh, Ireland this past week, uh, viewing livestock and the export facilities. So Wicklow Calf Company also outlined that a number of other North African countries are very interested in pur- purchasing dairy breeding stock in Ireland. There is very strong interest for Irish dairy breeding stock from a number of different countries, they outlined. So Wicklow Calf Company also outlined that the availability in Europe has been impacted as a result of the recent blue tongue outbreaks and countries that were supplying them with this dairy, these dairy stock now can't due to the restrictions. So both maiden and in-calf dairy breeding stock are being sourced for this contract and farmers who are interested can t- contact either Wicklow Calf Company or Southeast Dairy Stock. And Breffney, in the week leading up to Christmas, could you tell us what beef prices are looking like? Yes, yeah, so there was some good news on uh, on factory quotes for for cattle this week. Louise, um, beef prices have increased by five cent a kilo at many sites, and uh, this is, of course, the final full week factory kill of twenty twenty three. So most sites will be processing cattle all five days this week, and then will close for Christmas before reopening on Wednesday, December twenty seventh, for a three day week. Uh, and then most sites will then be reopening in January 2024 on Tuesday, January 2nd, and it'll be business as usual from then. Beef farmers will be delighted to hear that the trade has been strengthening for approximately the past six consecutive weeks. So prices for all types of cattle have been on the rise, um, which is, of course, good news. Um, looking at the heifers there, heifer quotes increased this week with almost all sites now quoting at least 495 and a grid or higher. But uh, in certain cases, up to 505 per kilo on the grid is available for choice lots of heifers. Bullocks have been quoted at 490 a kilo on the grid in general, with up to 5 euro on the grid available at the higher end of the price scale, again, for the choice lots of, of bullocks or steers. Um, supplies, interestingly, supplies of finished steers have been, uh, I suppose, gradually declining in recent weeks, but uh, finished heifer supplies have been remaining relatively firm over the fast, past few weeks, with actually a slight increase noted over the past two consecutive weeks. So just looking at cow price then, cow price quotes have generally held for this week at the same level as last week. So in the week ending Sunday, December 10th, the average price paid for an O equals 3 equals grade cow was 4.14 per kilo. And the top price paid was actually 4.50 per kilo. So farmers who are interested in viewing them figures can uh, log on to Agriland and they will see the prices paid for all types of cattle. Uh, by grade and factory on on the Agriland site under the the beef the beef page. This week, factories are quoting about approximately four fifty a kilo for cows grading in EU. All grade cows have been quoted at four forty a kilo. O grade cows have been quoted at four ten to four fifteen per kilo, and P grade cows have been quoted at three ninety five to four oh five. Now, Louise, as always, there's plenty of variation in cow price depending on the processor and the quality of cows being presented. So just uh, a quick look then at the bull prices, I suppose, and um, both under 24-month bulls and under 16-month bulls have both managed to strengthen in price at many processing outlets this week. So there's about 4.95 to 5.10 being quoted for bulls grade in the EU. All grade in bulls have been quoted at prices ranging from 4.85 to 5 euro. Bulls grading an O are being quoted at 4.75 to 4.80 and bulls grading a P are being quoted at approximately 10 cent less. Then just a quick look at the under 16 month bull price there and in general it's been quoted at about 4.85 to 4.95 per kilo on the grid. So again, a little bit of variation there in that category also. Thanks, Breffney. The Department of Agriculture published its forestry licensing plan just yesterday. Looking at the most recent forestry licensing dashboard, we can see that the department issued a forestation licenses for just 763 hectares this year. The figures show that the department is falling well behind the annual afforestation target of 8,000 hectares set down in the Climate Action Plan. DAFM estimated that it will issue 4,200 new licences in 2024 and confirmed that the department has capacity to issue sufficient licences to meet its annual target.
It estimated that there will be 1,000 afforestation licenses in total. So its plans are looking very optimistic for the next year in terms of reaching climate goals. And on the topic of forestry, the Department of Agriculture also confirmed this week the first finding in Ireland of a non-European bark beetle. Ashling, how was it found and what protocols are happening as a result? Yeah, so this little critter is called the Monterey Pine Engraver. I won't even attempt its Latin name, Louise. And this was discovered in a confined area in County Clare. There was 93 beetles found as part of the department's ongoing national surveys. They were found in traps that were located in forestry. None of them were found on uh, actual trees and there was no damage uh, caused to the trees as well. And laboratory tests that were carried out on the beetles have revealed that the these are of Mexican origin, but we're still unclear as to how they arrived in Ireland and investigations are ongoing. And uh, the department uh, has told us that the beetle is not considered an aggressive pest in its natural range and it's typically regarded as a secondary pest of stressed dead or dying trees. But it did note that there was limited research on the species. And because of that, there are high levels of uncertainty regarding the risks posed by the pest. So the Monterey pine engraver has been recorded attacking a wide range of pine tree species, but Scots pine is not currently uh, recorded as a host for the beetle. Now, this uh, insect has previously been detected in Europe and it has been associated with wood packaging material. Um, So essentially what has happened is this beetle is actually not um, listed or named in legislation, but under EU regulations, the plant health regulations, all non-European bark beetles are treated as what they call union quarantine pests. So as a result, the department has established a demarcated area, which is a radius of 10 kilometers from where these traps uh, uh, were set. And the department said that the restrictions will apply in this area to the felling and movement of pine species. And it's to ensure that untreated wood and wood products from the area would only leave it to be treated by DAFM and not for direct trade or export. And the department said it would be contacting forestry owners with pine plantations in the area directly with further information. Now, the IFA's forestry chair, Jason Fleming, reacted to this news. He said it was devastating for the small number of farmers involved, Louise, but uh, he reiterated his call for timber imports to be suspended pending agreement uh, across all stakeholders in the forestry sector on biosecurity measures that are implemented by the Department of Agriculture. And look, it, it It's interesting that this pest came from Mexico, but we're still not 100% sure how it made its way to County Clare. So we'll keep you up to date as we get any more news. Thanks, Ashling. And we also heard from the Irish Grain Growers Group this week, which claimed that it has clear evidence confirming that sewage treatment plants are adding significantly to Ireland's water quality problems. An independent analysis of the water directly downstream of sewage treatment plants is now taking place, which is being supported by the IGG. We have lots more about that over on agriland.ie if you want to catch up on that story. We also had lots of stories over time on Agriland with details of charitable tractor runs and other farming get-togethers to raise money. We know that farmers are very charitable people and as we step into Christmas we'd like to highlight one particular story about a County Clare farmer this year who underwent a heart transplant and will donate money in an expression of appreciation. Ashlyn, can you tell us a little bit about what the farmer is doing? Yeah, so this is Michael Ryan. He lives and farms in Six Mile Bridge and he had just celebrated his 60th birthday, Louise, when he underwent the transplant in June 2019. Now, his daughter, Kleena, raised over €4,000 from running a half marathon last June for the Matter Hospital in Dublin, where Michael underwent his transplant. But he has now decided that he's going to raise even more money for the hospital. Uh, He's assisted by his wife, Patricia, in this endeavour and And the fundraiser that they're organising is from the sale of an Angus bullock, which will be slaughtered at Moy Valley Meats in County Kildare. And all proceeds will be donated to the Matter Foundation. So fair play to Michael. And he's obviously giving back to uh, the Matter and uh, all the staff there in the team that have given him a new lease of life. Um, Michael has had a lifetime of health complications uh, in relation to his heart. And uh, I'm sure he was very, very grateful to 
get that transplant. And he's appealed to all of us. I suppose it's a New Year's resolution, Louise, for everybody to pay attention to our health and to, to reach out to the experts that are available across the country if you feel that things aren't right. And perhaps as well, maybe to, to consider organ donation, Louise. Um, you know, it's it's just a very uh, impactful story and a lot of our readers clicked on it this week. And uh, as you said, it shows just the, the festive spirit, the charitable nature of farmers. Uh, farmers come in for a lot of criticism from the public, but they're never found wanting when it comes to giving back to their local communities. And uh, this is just a perfect example of it. Absolutely. It's just it's an amazing story and it's great to see that Michael is doing so well. And if you do want to contribute to the Matter Hospital Foundation, you could do so by donation to the Heart Transplant Unit there. And in the run up to Christmas, Agriland would like to remind farmers to kick off the wellies and take a bit of a break. Will you be following suit, Ashling? Oh, absolutely. The <laughs> chocolate Kimberleys will be opened and I'll be jumping up on the couch and going through the RTE guide with a highlighter now over the next few days, Louise, so we don't miss out on Die Hard and A Wonderful Life and all the rest of the, <laughs> the classic films. And look, yeah, you're dead right. I mean, farmers work so hard all year round and it is a time to sit back and take stock and, you know, all the hard work has to be for something. And particularly if you've young children in the house, take the time to enjoy it. Uh, life passes by and the, the years with young children pass by very, very quickly, as many people will tell you. So make sure to enjoy it. Go down to the local GA match, go crazy, jump into the water and do a Christmas swim. But try and take some time away from the yard once all the jobs are done and maybe leave the, the bigger jobs uh, that uh, don't need urgent attention to the new year and, and take that break because the springtime won't be long coming around. And uh, that's when things get very, very busy again on farm. And uh, yeah, happy Christmas to everybody out there. For sure. Now, I'm afraid that's all we have time for on this week's episode. The Farming Week will be back in the new year and we would like to thank you for listening. We really appreciate all the likes and shares. It does not go unnoticed. We would also like to thank our producer Dara for all his hard work throughout the year. Please don't forget to continue to rate, review and follow The Farming Week on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love if you could spare some time to give us five stars. From myself, Ashling, Breffney and all at Agriland, we would hope that you have a Merry Christmas and a great start to the new year. 